Hey guys, I wanted to do something a bit different today because recently I saw a video, I don't remember where, but I saw a video that made me kind of nostalgic for some things that uh, I remember from when I first started VR chat. And I kind of wanted to take you on sort of like uh, my memories of my 2018 VR chat experience. I didn't have VR starting off playing this game. Um, I was in desktop and you would arrive here. You would spawn in the, um, I guess it's considered the 2017 hub because they did change this. It would always be a public instance. You'd just get thrown in. Who knows who would be here? <laughs> and they'd just be hanging out. Usually you wouldn't stay here much. Um, you would kind of just use this as a, okay, I'm in. Let me see who's on. Let me go to a world. Maybe pick an avatar, because at the time, you were in the avatar that you were in. There were no favorites. You would only be able to be in whatever avatar you were currently in at the time. I spent a good portion of 2018 in desktop mode uh, until my first headset was um, essentially donated to me. Uh from uh, a handful of people during streams um, were very generous to get me my first oculus now you might be wondering what is with the avatar well this was the avatar i used unless of course i used a vegeta um because you know obviously i did <laughs> i did the voice and stuff but this was the avatar i used it's based on a character from one shot called calamus and I still have this favorited from way back then. It's like when I could favorite this, it's been in my favorites list for years and I, I don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> A lot of very early VR chat memories were when I was wearing this avatar. But anyway, that's more so just an explanation as to why I'm wearing this, because again, it's kind of got that nostalgia feeling. I wanted to take you to some of the maps I remember going to very commonly, providing they're still available. There's a lot of maps I used to go to that are just down, uh, never got re-uploaded, uh, or have been updated to be something pretty different compared to how they were when they were originally up you know the presentation rooms are classic i've met so many people here <laughs> it, it's kind of wild to think about how many friends i've made in this world well at least back then uh, because it was kind of like low cost but you were in a small enough space that you were kind of you know able to interact and uh, there was enough room to still move around you could obviously draw stuff and it was simple but it got the job done and that's it it's just not really used much anymore i don't even know if there's like many people i'm the only one in an instance of this world right now and like this is a pretty good time for people to be on that's crazy ah uh, this world oh man i loved this place it's definitely changed a lot since it was first uploaded because i don't recall um some of the detail being here um and there's some extras that were kind of updated along the along the way but i remember this one specifically because <laughs> it would be where i would go it was very populated it'd be where i'd go to meet people and do impressions i distinctly remember a memory where i was sitting in this corner sitting right there i was in vegeta not saying anything right i was just kind of observing because sometimes I, I admit i do that I, I like to be mute sometimes uh, on vr chat and uh someone came up to me and asked something in character and i responded as vegeta and they weren't expecting it and i just remember the whole room kind of just being like you what <laughs> and then they legitimately asked me because back then i would like in 2018 right i was not quite as confident in my vegeta impression and i went for more of a uh, team four star thing you know the the abridged version and legitimately at that time despite me saying no a good majority of the room was convinced i was the voice actor from the abridged series for a bit <laughs> even now i'm thinking back like i don't think i sounded anything like him to be honest like now i'm thinking about it it was kind of like a halfway between the abridged version and the actual version kind of combined to make my own thing i suppose now i'm thinking about it um but i guess in the heat of the moment you know 
pretty sure he wasn't here the whole time too. I remember then being not him. <laughs> this was one of those wild maps that when I actually got my VR to look at it in VR and I actually had uh it was two nanachis were on that desk on the on the counter there. And they both came up with their big fucking hands and they put their hands in front of my face. That was weird. That was very bizarre. It was probably one of the only times I've had an instance of Phantom Sense, because I really don't get it that much. I get it a bit in my face. Um, that was weird. <laughs> that was a weird experience. I was kind of shy, to be honest, because, like, it makes me realize that VR chat definitely helped in terms of getting me to be more confident talking to people I don't know. Um... Because uh, before this game, I would very much stick to my circles of people, right? Like, I had two or three groups I was dedicated to, and it was like, this was kind of an experience of, of getting beyond that to try and socialize again. Guy and Knight. God, I remember this place being another meeting point, similar to the presentation room. Like, people would come here all the time. Um, because, I mean, ultimately, the amount of choice you have now is is staggering compared to back then. No, not any, not everyone would upload worlds and such. And, like, nowadays, you know, <laughs> there's, there's just so many things. So much. And, and this is specifically, like, the classic Gaia Knight. There's another version of this map that also holds some good memories, uh, which I'll go to after this. Um, but this was it. This was the classic one. I'd see, like, so many people here by the fire, just vibing and memeing around. <laughs> so now we have Guy Knight, what it is now, is more similar or, or closer resembles um, one of the key moments for me in VR chat you're also going to notice some like ghosting effect on the on the camera here and that's because this world has post processing which i can't figure out how to turn off so <laughs> um but this was one of the maps that was uh part of a big like puzzle thing that was happening between a bunch of creators and maps um which I don't recall the exact name of what was happening, but it was a bunch of maps that led to um, kind of like an ARG where you'd have to like figure out puzzles or what item to put where and find keys to unlock doors and, and put items in certain places. Uh, it was Mr. Whiskers, that was right. Um... And it turned into this big thing, and Gaia Knights was, I think, the first one? I had started streaming VRChat at this point, um, and so there was a few times when we did them live because we weren't sure, you know, what to do, and it was more fun that way. And this map was uh, one of the best ones. Oh, good to know you're still here. <laughs> Yeah, it actually seems like quite a lot of the ARG stuff is still here. I don't remember how to trigger a lot of it, but it is nice that it's been preserved. Um, and and this, right, this is like what really got me into what VR chat maps could be. There wasn't that many. I mean, there were a few gaming related things, but you were very limited to what you could and couldn't do. And there are a few horror maps out. The Huggy Dungeon series, for example. Those don't exist on here anymore. I believe the creator moved them to a different place or just removed them in general. I'm not sure. But um, nowadays, you know, there's so many chill worlds. <laughs> that, I mean, this is a chill world, technically. Um, but it, it was, you know, this ARG was opening the door to what could have been, you know, and what what turned out to be, uh, and what could still be, um, an absolute, like, 
really interesting and an experience you can only get in something like this. And that's the thing, like, so many chill worlds get uploaded to VRChat. And that's that's not like, I'm not saying anything bad about that. Like, I love chill worlds. I have an entire favorites list of chill worlds that I love to go to nowadays and vibe in, which maybe I'll like show off some in the future. Um, some of my favorites. But less and less do I see like maps that have hidden stuff, secret things to do. There are some game worlds that are great, uh, and and yes, there are maps. And, and for all I know, th this is like one of the other issues, I suppose. Not really an issue, I guess, but um, so many maps get uploaded now. Sometimes the really cool ones with the with the extra bits in, uh, or what I'm looking for, uh, get swept under the rug because of just all the other worlds that get created as well. It's why if I make something, I want to, even if it's a chill world there will always be something. Even if it's as simple as the idea of like, you have to find these hidden items to unlock a thing. Just something to make the world a bit more interesting. And like, hey, do you know about this secret thing? Um, one of the things I plan to do is make it so that in any map that I make and upload on VR chat, there is going to be one specific thing. It won't be much. It'll usually be like some sort of sound or special effect, but there will be one thing that can only happen if I'm present in the world. Um, and I, I have that. The InSpace Markiplier map has that feature. Of course, it can't be a nostalgic time or a nostalgic experience video thing <laughs> without the great pug. <laughs> this map, oh my god. This map doesn't get used as much nowadays because it's not quest compatible uh, and the black cat exists and that one just kind of took over. That's like the next era, right? Which a lot of the problems with a lot of the maps I'm going to nowadays, they aren't quest compatible. I don't know how many of the maps I've actually been to uh, just today are quest compatible. Let's let's have a quick look. One. <laughs> One. <laughs> so naturally, if you're here to hang out and, and not be around questies, uh, th this is the place still. Like, it, it gets fairly busy. It can have about 200 people in. But you compare it to Black Cat with thousands of people. <laughs> It's a little bit of a difference. This was actually another one of the maps that was part of the big ARG back in the day alongside Guy and I. It would require like combos of drinks being filled up, of roses being put in certain areas. And that chest there would open up with a key that leads you to the door, that leads you to a single player only map, um, which would be like a maze that you have to go through. And all these were to basically unlock these little pieces of what I assumed was a weapon. And you would have to take a picture of you, like, with that piece and put it on their Discord. You got all the pieces, you had a chance to go into the finale. It was this whole, this whole spiel. <laughs> um, and I never did that part. I just liked doing the puzzles and going through the maps. And that's not to say that this map still doesn't hold its fair share of secrets. Um, but... Nothing like it used to be. Nothing nothing quite the same. I miss it. <laughs> I love maps that are one thing, but have like a little undertone of something else, right? Like, they're just a chill world, but if you find the right things, something extra happens, something... I love that shit so much. <laughs> so much role-playing happened in this map. It was actually kind of wild. I, I used to come across people who would pretend to run the bars, like, legitimately. Um, I'd have friends that would come over and, and do their own roleplay things. Of course, the roleplay scene from then to now has changed dramatically. Like, there are whole roleplay scenarios now with dedicated maps and characters and DMs and, and Udon things that help uh, with mechanics and inventories and all kinds of stuff, especially what with avatars now being completely different. Um, the amount of things you can do is wild, actually. I feel like some people might see these maps and say something along the lines of, ah, oh, VRChat was so much better back then. You know, VRChat community has, has changed. And yeah, 
the VR chat community has changed quite a bit, but that's mostly because there are like, well, if we're comparing from when I played back in 2018, you know, the the player base is more than like grown like times six its size, maybe more. I don't know. It, it, there's a lot more now. It, it, just going by the Steam charts alone, there are there are tens of thousands of more people playing this game, uh, especially considering it doesn't track questies. <laughs> like, but I do want to go on record and say things have gotten way better for VR chat. Like, VR chat now is far better than it was back in the day. <laughs> and I don't necessarily mean community wise. Obviously, just because there are more people now means you get more exposure to these these people and these communities and people think that, you know, stuff is worse than it used to be. When really it's just the more people you involve, of course, you're going to get more bad eggs because it's just more people. And you, you know, that just happens. Even if we're just talking performance, right? Like, the engine upgrades have done wonders for this game. And people might go, oh, I crash all the time, oh, I do this or that. Yeah, and that's true. It, there, there are times when, you know, crashing happens and stuff. But you also got to remember that, like, the problem with that is more so, yes, they are improving the system. They're making the bar further, right? But then, as us, we as the creators, get more options to put ourselves with the bar still. So, if we tried to do what we're doing now, olden day, we'd just break the game. It'd just die. <laughs> it would. One person comes in with an avatar and the whole thing crashes. And that wasn't the intent. We can get away with so much extra stuff now um, that it's mind boggling in comparison. Like this avatar, all this has is gestures. There's nothing else to it. That's all it is. Something that's like drastically different uh, then from now is the club scene, like the dancing scene, uh, just kind of clubs and bars in general are way, way bigger now, way more extravagant. They have like dedicated teams and dancers and stuff, uh, DJ sets, DJ booths, all that stuff. Absolutely wild nowadays. Um, you know, with parties and, and, and drinking, obviously a lot of people bring up the drinking problem, quote unquote, that VR chat has. <laughs> and I like a drink. I love the drink. Um, I usually do it once a week on Saturdays uh, with my friends on VR chat. And uh, yeah, it's a great time. Back in the day, though, before I had that dedicated group, um, you know, I had a small group of people I used to drink with, and I used to come here. It's an MMD world where there are some songs over there on a board and it makes a 3D model dance on the stage with all of the fancy effects of their music video, quote unquote, <laughs> on the TV. But you could also get up on there and be part of the video as well. Overall, the place is small, but it was a lovely place to hang out. There would be a lot of people here and you just vibe and and listen to music i mean it's only 10 songs but <laughs> yeah i had a small group of friends that i made here and we'd come here quite often uh this was pretty early on i was still in desktop and you know i'd, I'd have fun trying to clean up <laughs> from all the glasses that had been thrown around i'd try and clean up and put them back on the shelves uh yeah it was good it was good i ain't gonna lie this is the map that introduced me to the idea of like Oh my god, people with VR can be lewd in this game? Shit was wild. Changed my changed my mind on getting VR headset. Instantly, I needed it. <laughs> I ran out of places to go and I didn't end the video, so that's it. That's the end of the video. Oh.